Let us begin our prayer today for Bill and for ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, William died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with Christ eternal glory. Wrong and tender. 
O oh Lord, show us the immense power of your goodness as we mourn for our brother Bill, taken from us suddenly. May we be confident that he has now passed over into your eternal company. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to be seated now as we listen to our readings from the sacred scripture, the first one from wisdom to be proclaimed by Joanne Zamp. reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction, but they are in peace. For if before men, indeed, they be punished, yet it is their hope full of immortality, Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them. And as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We have an everlasting home in heaven. We know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. So we are always courageous, although we know while we are at home in the body, we are always from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight, Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We invite you to please stand.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. But I told you that although you have seen me, you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On behalf of our pastor, Father Healy, and the entire staff here at the parish, I would like to offer our sincere condolences to Linda and the entire family. Bill has been a parishioner here for many years and supported the parish in many different endeavors over those years. You know, it's very difficult to succinctly summarize Bill's accomplishments and his impact on the Cape Cod community. Each of us, I'm sure, came to meet Bill in a different and very varied ways. Some know him from the restaurant business, some from the number of community service organizations he was affiliated with. Many have met him through his many and varied philanthropic interests. He was involved in so many aspects of our community that it is hard to apply a simple descriptor to him other than to say his impact was significant on many levels. And yes, some of us, myself included, knew him as a friend. Someone you could depend on. Someone you could always get advice or an opinion from. Often, whether you wanted it or not. <laughs> oh, you have been there too. <laughs> that in itself was part of the uniqueness of the man. There is no question you always knew where you stood with Bill. A man of character, a man of strong personality, a man who had been blessed with common sense and a keen acumen for business. And for those who knew him well, there was no question he was a man with a big heart. And that aspect of his life is well documented through his many philanthropic undertakings. But there is more. He and Linda quietly supported many individuals who needed a leg up in order to overcome obstacles in their journey through life. These are the untold stories, but incredibly significant nonetheless. Through their caring and compassion, they were able to change lives and change them for the better. We gather here today united in sorrow because of Bill's death. The reality of death brings with it a sense of loss, a sense of pain, and yes, heartbreak. But we are gathered here united 
by something else, our faith. You see, Bill was a man of faith. He didn't wear it on his sleeve. I know this because we talked about it on several occasions. And you know, faith opens our minds to the whole picture about life, death, and what happens after death. You see, faith gives us hope. Today's scripture readings reinforce the theme that de death does not have the last word. Some think the story of human life is birth, life, and death. For people of faith, it is different. The story is not birth, life, and death, but rather life, death, and resurrection. Our faith tells us death does not have the last word. Death is not the end of the story. It is the middle. The end of the story for those of faith is the resurrection and life without end. You see, my friends, when viewed through the eyes of faith, the farewell we give to Bill at this Mass is temporary. The burial we will give to Bill is temporary. He will live and he will rise on the last day, as Scripture tells us. With all this being said, we still grieve. And it's okay to grieve. It's a natural response because we love Bill and we will miss him. Even Jesus wept when his friend Lazarus died. And he wept even though he was about to bring him back to life. But we grieve with hope, not with despair. That makes a big difference. As we continue our celebration, let us pray for Bill and for his entire family. Pray that he will complete his journey in peace and be fulfilled by his faith and hope in eternal life. God bless you, my friend. May you rest in peace. Amen. Let us stand and turn to God with confidence who raised his son, Jesus Christ, from death to pray for Bill and for ourselves, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. For Bill, who in baptism was given the privilege of eternal life, that he may be now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bill, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased relatives and friends of Bill, and all departed loved ones, that they may have a re the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the friends and families of Bill, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, through faith, give us certainty that beyond death there will be a light where lost things are found and broken things are mended where there will be rest for the weary and joy for the sad, where all that we have known to be of good will still exist, and where we will meet Bill and all we have known and loved once again. 
We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us be seated now as the altar is prepared and the gifts of bread and wine are brought forward. stand and together pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of the soul of your servant William, we ask your mercy that he who never doubted your Son to be a loving Savior may now find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son. In him, the hope of resurrection has dawned. 
that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the It is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Let us kneel as we pray our Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis R. Pope, and Edgar R. Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember the soul of your servant, William, whom you have called from this world to yourself, grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To all our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. coming of God's kingdom, where we hope to be reunited with Bill and all who have gone before us in faith. Let us pray now as Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us, us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the, the power, and the glory, the glory are yours. yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who on the day of your glorious resurrection appeared before your disciples, saying, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For the reception of communion today, we will have a station at the break in the center, at the front and then over here. If you'd please come by the center aisle and return by the sides. If it isn't your custom to receive communion, but you would like to come forward in the procession and receive a blessing, if you would approach us with your hands folded rather than outstretched, we'll know to impart that blessing to you. I am the word that leads 
leads all to freedom. I am the peace the world cannot give. I will call your name, embracing all.
this time, we invite David Troll forward to share with us some personal reflections on Bill's life. Um, confession. Yesterday I had a blue suit, tie and everything. I decided to go full Zammer. <laughs> Good morning. Um, first let me say that I feel privileged and honored to be up here. I look around, I see some people that I know and others that I don't know that I know that Bill had a special relationship with, one he valued, and I'm sure one you valued. So my hope today would be that some of these comments might touch something that you would have said or thought as we talk about Bill. In the 1980s and 90s, Bill and I, usually in a week in February, would go sailing charter a boat, go sailing out of the British Virgin Islands. One evening, and I think this was in the early 80s, we had a few um, adult beverages. We were gazing at a, a sky that was amazing. So many stars, it just was something I've never seen again. We agreed that night that whoever passed first would have the other deliver the eulogy. We would laugh about how many stories that could be told in polite company and the more numerous stories that could not be told. This eulogy commitment would be reaffirmed annually. We spent many enjoyable hours cataloging mistakes we had made, exploits we had undertaken, and boasting of the embarrassing stories we would tell about each other. We would laugh about how, many impor how important it was to win the eulogy bet. <laughs> well, I'm here. Okay. Um, more recently, many of my conversations have been with Bill on the telephone. There were some regular topics that we used to cover. Um, First one was that we would reaffirm that we were friends, no best friends, for 49 years. Then we would laugh about how different we are. I think the movie, The Odd Couple, would probably be a very good indicator of that. Uh, we also would remind each other that we shared a common opinion of the Boston Globe. Most importantly, we would brag about our relationships and our family members. I would get updates on these guys sometimes twice a week. Then we would toss out, remember the time you. Now, that's always an embarrassing story about the other guy, which would invariably end with Bill trumping me with the fact the fact that he was my best man, not once, but twice. <laughs> After several, several minutes, he would pull a billy. He would end the conversation, usually with me in mid-sentence, and say, gotta go, Linda is here, I've gotta, I've gotta take this call. <laughs> thus, thus ending the conversation, he was un undeniably himself always. Now, many of you, I'm sure, have had the pleasure of introducing Bill to other friends. 
When I did, I frequently got unsolicited feedback from them on their initial impressions of Bill. Here are some of my favorite responses. He's gruff and tough. Well, he was gruff and tough. He's a big, woolly bear. I didn't know what woolly meant until I saw the picture of him behind the, the, the wheel of sailboat. He's kind of a curmudgeon. I would agree that he was a curmudgeon, but I would bet you that he couldn't spell it. <laughs> but my favorite response, and I think everybody might have had a moment on this one, he is the Rodney Dangerfield character in Caddyshack. <laughs> Actually, those are proof that first impressions are not always accurate. Many of you know Bill could never do anything halfway. I think his many hobbies might demonstrate this. Let me just go through a few. The first one, which I think most of you did not endure, was golf. This was a long time ago. When Bill got into golf, he went out and bought the most expensive clubs. He got his little polo shirt. He did all of that stuff. He hung in there for a while, but it wasn't long before Bill understood that he was awful at golf. Gone. The next one, which again I think many of you didn't know, don't know about, is photography. Bill, of course, went out and spent the most money he could possibly spend on a camera on a four foot, I think it was four feet long, lens, <laughs> tripods, and I think at one point he tried to build a dock room. That lasted until the iPhone came out, <laughs> and the pictures taken here were probably better than his. Woodworking, one of my favorites. At the farm in New Hampshire, the house was connected, I believe, by a little breezeway. Bill decided that it was rural, it was nice. Why not have a little shop, a little woodworking shop in between? So I was up and I came back about a month later. Sure enough, there was everything jammed into this little space that you could think of, every kind of saw, you know, vice, everything in this space. I just shook my head, okay. I came back two months later. I went in, I said, take me into the shop. We went into the shop and there was a coffee table. And I said, what else have you done, Bill? Well, this took a while. And I, I think that was the last thing. So we sat down before I left and we tallied up how much he spent on all of the equipment. So in New Hampshire, there's the, there's the one and only $19,000 coffee table, okay? <laughs> now, the great exception to this was sailing. He loved it, and he stayed with it. Sailing was more than a hobby for Bill. It was a passion. Billy was a pretty good listener and a better mentor. So what lessons did Bill teach us? The first one, don't fear failure. That is the entrepreneurial spirit that defined Bill. And everyone he knew respected that part of him. He was totally a self-made man. He was quick to point out that his early failures helped him in his future successes. Respect those who work hard. 48 years ago, Bill was working at the New England Medical Center. He oversaw the cafeteria and was adored by the cafeteria workers. They loved Mr. Zammer because he was clear with his expectations and he was open, honest, and sincere in dealing with them. I believe he used this approach his whole life and don't think that things were any different at the Flying Bridge or Clancy's. The legions of staff 
would likely say the same positive things about him. Be loyal. Bill was staunchly loyal. He valued loyalty in others. He would frequently share stories with me about the staff who has worked 20 or 25 years with him. He loved to talk about the outstanding qualities of the Jamaican contingent and highlight their success stories. He was proud of all the staff and their accomplishments and longevity. Family. Bill was enormously proud of his three children, Robbie, Peter, and Joanne, and their children. He also loved Linda's family as well and enjoyed his role as a grandfather figure. He would often marvel at the intelligence of the younger generation, while also saying that he just doesn't understand them. <laughs> Picture two old guys almost daily talking up a storm, continually amazed and awed by the younger people as their lives unfold. Now, there are two other observations that I would like to make and share with you. One is Linda. Bill and Linda were together for almost 40 years. In anybody's book, that's a long time. And to put up with Bill for all those years, <laughs> Linda has to be a saint. We're right in the right place. Uh, I have so much admiration for the manner in which Bill and Linda's relationship, their love, devotion, and partnership grew over the years. I have been around for all of those years. Their relationship grew and matured as no other that I have had the honor of, of witnessing. This love and respect was the bedrock of their personal, professional, and philanthropic lives. Bill and Linda's support for their community, Bill and Linda's generosity and support for the causes which are important to them have been chronicled all week long. They have given back so much to those on Cape Cod and beyond. There aren't enough adjectives to adequately praise their efforts. Their generosity, kindness, and belief in giving back has been central to their lives. Bill wanted to be rough and gruff, but he was a giver, a helper, a mentor, and always available to give advice. And again, my favorite line in the obituary was, his friends appreciated most of his advice. So how hard is it to to lose old friends, you don't know how deeply they are woven into the fabric of your life until they aren't there anymore. In closing, there was a song by Christopher Cross that Bill loved. Every time he went sailing, we would play this on the crummy boat cassette tape player, which many of you don't even know about, while we were sailing in port or gazing at the stars. Could I have special dispensation just to play a, a piece of that? Thank you, Father.
We love you, Billy. Please remain standing. <laughs> this time I thank the deacons present with us, Deacon Paul Harney, Deacon Dick Murphy, Deacon Bob LeMay, who are here to join Deacon Frank with us in celebrating this Mass. And I send the deep regret of Monsignor Tosti, who was so long associated with Bill, and he certainly wanted to be here but couldn't be. So his sympathy to you, Linda, and to your family. Let us pray. O God Almighty, our faith assures us that your Son, Jesus Christ, died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Bill, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> With trust in God, we have gathered here this morning to pray for Bill, and now we come to the church's farewell. There is always sadness and parting, but we must take comfort in the hope that one day we are going to see Bill again and enjoy his friendship. And although those of us who have gathered here this morning will disperse in sorrow, we trust that the mercy of God will gather us together again one day in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another with our faith in Jesus Christ. May the choirs of angels come to greet you. May they speed you to Unfold you in his mercy. May you find eternal life. The Lord is my light and my help. It is he who protects me from harm. The Lord is the strength of my days. Before whom should I tread? hands, O Lord, we commend the soul of your servant William. In the sight of this world he has died. In your sight may he now live forever. Forgive him any human failings, and in your goodness grant him everlasting light, life, and peace. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the sure hope of the resurrection, let us go now in the peace of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Joyful 
Try.